Hello, Pinnacle Village. I am Derek, and I am part of our team of pastors here in Pinnacle Village. And today we are continuing on with our Love Challenge Home Edition. And we are currently on day nine, where we'll be taking a look at a very important attribute of love. And this is an attribute that we need to be reminded of, that even I myself need to be reminded of on a daily basis. And it continues on in 1 Corinthians 13, verse 5. It says, It, love, is not self-seeking. And to get a better grasp of this verse, I want us to read it in other translations. It says in the NLT, It, love, does not demand its own way. In the ESV, it says, It, love, does not insist on its own way. And in the message version, it says, Love isn't always me first. And this completely goes backwards in our world and our culture today, which prioritizes self-satisfaction, self-gratification, and self-love. I mean, the messaging that we hear almost on a daily basis, whether that be in ads, self-help books, movies, TV, music, but not only within these external sources, but also internally within ourselves as well, we have this conflict. And this is the conflict that our own satisfaction, our own needs, our own wants, our own desires, our own interests come first. And this me first mentality is brought into our very homes. If we really take the time to reflect, if we think about the other attributes that we've already gone through within this love challenge, the moments we become impatient, the moments we become unkind, envious, boastful, prideful, the moments where we begin to dishonor others are actually the moments where we begin to put ourselves first, where we put our own wants, our own needs, our own desires, our own interests first. I mean, for our parents, there are many moments where we begin to impose our plans and our agendas on our kids in the disguise of selfless love. But really, when we look beneath those things, we push our kids in these directions because it actually pleases ourselves and our own interests and not necessarily our children. And on the other side, for our children, there are times where we put our own interests first, not caring about how our parents feel about our own actions. For example, when they ask us to help us around the house, maybe do chores, but we settle to play video games. Or when our parents take the time to help us and guide us within our lives, but we don't listen to what they say because we put our own interests, we seek our own needs, our own wants first. And now I'm not saying that we completely disregard ourselves because the love of God that is shown to us in scripture is not talking about a self-destructive love. See, what scripture teaches us is since we are completely secure and satisfied in God's love through Christ, individually as we are, in God's love, we can trust that our deepest wants, our deepest needs, our deepest desires are taken care of and reshaped by God, that we are completely taken care of by God in his love. And because of this, we can now, through the love of God, ultimately put our own selfish needs aside put our own selfish wants aside, put our own selfish desires aside, and we are free to prioritize the purposes of God and the needs of others first before our own. And the Apostle John beautifully captures this within his letter in 1 John. In 1 John chapter 4, verses 10 to 12, he says this, This is love. Not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. And just a few verses down in verse 19, he says, we love God and others because he first loved us, that the reason why we are able to fully love God and to fully love others is because God completely and fully loves us. See, the love that God leads us into is a love that is no longer self-centered. It is a love that is God and others centered. God takes us from a love that says me first to a love that says God and others first. So I want to ask us, village, 
So what love has been shaping you lately? What love has been shaping you lately? Have we settled for a version of love that is self-centered or have we allowed God's love to reshape what we hold at the very center of our lives? Because the love that shapes us as individuals is the love that will shape our homes. The love that builds us as individuals will be the love that builds our homes. So what love has been shaping you, has been shaping us lately? Let's be reminded that in our study of 1 Corinthians 13, that Paul is talking about a very specific type of love that he is pushing the Corinthian church and now us as we're reading this letter to live in and live out. So let's be reminded of the types of love that are directly and indirectly referenced and mentioned in scripture. There are four kinds of love that we will be talking about. And the first type of love is eros, which refers to physical or sexual love, love that is rooted in self. And the characteristic of this love is that it is a love that is rooted in flesh, that it is rooted in desire, that is rooted in our carnal beings, rooted in our flesh. And sometimes we are motivated by this type of love, this physical love. Now, the second love that is brought up is philos or phileo love, which means warm affection or friendship. This is where we get Philadelphia, right? Brotherly love or sisterly love. This is the love that we, uh, that is cultivated within our close friendships. And this also goes into the third level of love, which is storge, which is familial love, the bonds and the love that we have between uh, a mother and her child, a father and her child. These, these are the familial bonds, devoted family bonds that we have, and that is the love of Sorge. And these are all beautiful examples of love. But the love that Paul is talking about is this love, agape love. And agape love is the sacrificial, unconditional love of God. Uh, Martin Lloyd-Jones talks about this agape love in this quote. The great characteristic of this love, agape love, and this is where it essentially is different from the others, is that this is not so much governed by the desire to have as by the desire to give. God so loved the world, how? That he gave. There's nothing wrong with the other types of love as I have said this previously, but even when you have them at their best, they are always self-centered. They're always thinking of themselves. But the characteristic of this other love, agape love, is that it does not think of itself. This love is a love that gives. It is not always considering what it is going to have, but what it may give for the benefit of the other. See, agape love, the love of God embodied through Christ, is never self-seeking. Agape love in its very nature is self-giving, self-sacrificing. And this is the love that we are to build our life upon. This is the love that we are called to live in, to be fully immersed in and to live out within our lives. And this is the love that should give shape to our lives as individuals. And this is the love, this agape love should be the very foundation of our homes. So how are we supposed to live in and live out this agape love? In another letter of Paul, Paul instructs the church of Ephesus to, can we say this together, walk in the way of love. In Ephesians 5 verse 1 to 2, it says, follow God's example. Therefore, as dearly loved children, and can we read that together? Walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. So what can we learn from this scripture and, and what it means to walk in this way of love? And I pray that this is a scripture that we would go back to when we find ourselves starting to become self-centered again and again, over and over again, that we would come back to this. That in walking in the way of love, we deny ourselves and seek God. In Ephesians 5, verse 1 to 2a, it says, Follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children, and walk in the way of love. See, as God's dearly loved children, 
We can now no longer, we don't have to follow our own feelings. We don't have to follow our own preferences. But now we are invited to follow God's example in walking out this way of love. And he gives us this example through Christ. We can observe Christ. We can watch how he loves through his word. We rely on God's spirit to help us die to ourselves. And we find rest in following Christ. That in walking in the way of love, walking in the way of Christ, we are invited to take up our cross and deny ourselves to continually follow him in his way of love. That we deny ourselves and begin to seek God instead of seeking ourselves. And secondly, that in walking in the way of love, we give our lives to God and to others. See in Ephesians 5 verses 2b, the end of it, it says, just as Christ loved us and gave himself up for us as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. See, in walking in this way of love, we give ourselves in loving service to the people around us. And we also give ourselves in loving worship to God. See, Christ loved by loving us so much that he gave him, himself up fully for us and loving God so much that he gave his life fully to God as well in a life of worship as a pleasing sacrifice. And here's this, walking in the way of love starts with each and every one of us. This is an active choice that we are invited to take each and every single moment, each and every single day. And it doesn't start somewhere far, but it starts within our very homes. And this is what leads us to our love challenge for day nine. And I hope that these are questions that we can ponder on daily, not just within the moments of our love challenge, but as we continue on within our daily walk with God. Number one, what selfish want, need, or desire is God asking me to surrender today? And secondly, who is God leading me to selflessly give myself to today? Maybe God is leading me to show his love to a friend to a coworker, to the people within our very homes, our spouses, our children, our brothers and sisters, who is God leading me to selflessly give myself to today? Let's just enter into a word of prayer as we end. Lord, Father, we thank you for the reminder that you've given us once again of your agape love. Lord, we have allowed other loves to shape our lives. We have allowed self-centeredness to shape the way that we love others, the way that we live our lives. And we just ask you, God, once again, for your agape love to take its place within our lives. We thank you once again for this reminder, O oh God, that your love never seeks self, but denies self and seeks you. That this love completely gives itself up for others and for you, O oh God. We just want to say that we love you. We thank you. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.